opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give it freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest and made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the Day of Judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to uh, uh, John chapter 14, verse 7. I'm sorry, John chapter 7, verse 14. John chapter 7, verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? And Yahushua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. Mm -hmm. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Right? So he said, it's very clear. He said, you'll know, you'll know if you're following the right thing as long as you obey what the, what the Most High God is uh, commanding us to do. Right? A lot of times we look into it and we want to understand, well, okay, you know, how do I see for sure that the Hebrews are, are, are actually the black people in, in America today? Right? Or how do I know for sure that, that, um, that you know, in the end times, what the, what the, what the locusts with the hair you know what I'm saying, hair, you know what I'm saying, flowing down like women, you know what I'm saying, what that locust is, is that a helicopter, right, and so we look at all these different things that these people come up with, and we look at, is it, you know, is the rapture going to happen, or all of, of God's church going to be taken away, you know, in one fell swoop, when Yahushua will pop up, or when Jesus pop up, and we try to understand these things, but we look a little too deep, right, we get to looking too deep without even understanding what we have to obey, he said, if you do the will of the Father, then you'll know whether what you're following or not. Right? You don't have to worry about whether you following whether you should be following a Calvinist or a Muslim, a Sunni or a Shiite, a uh, a, uh, a a Hebrew Israelite, a Christian, all these different things. None of that stuff matters. Right? As soon as you as soon as you can break it down and say, you know what? I know what the man told me to do. I know he told me to turn away from sin. I may not be able to break down Revelation and tell you exactly what it say, but I know he told me not to lie. I know the man told me to stop cussing. Told me not to not to commit adultery, not not fornicate. I know the thing. That's that's what I know. I mean, that thing ain't clear. It ain't no mystery there, right? It's a, it's a mystery of what the seven churches are, the seven seven congregations. That's a mystery. Like exactly what exactly does that mean? Who is he talking to at that point? That's a little bit of a mystery. Right? It's a mystery when you talk about 144,000. Right? Who was who that 144,000? How you know? That, that stuff is a mystery. Ain't no mystery when the man tell you, you know what I'm saying, don't commit a murder. Don't steal. Right? That's flat out. So that's what we're here to do. First, we're here to understand exactly what we should do, what we shouldn't do. What our restrictions are. How do we stay within the love of the Most High God? Right? Then after that, he opens up our understanding because he told us, you do his will, you'll know what you follow. All right? You'll know how it play out. All right? That's important for us. All right? That's what Yahushua uh, grabbed Matthew chapter 19, verse uh, Matthew chapter 19, 
verse 14. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. Matthew chapter 19, verse 14. Yahushua said, <clears throat> Yahushua, what did Yahushua say? Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Uh huh. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right? He came up to him. He said, What good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? How do I have eternal life? He had a very clear question. What good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? All right, let's hear what the man said. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said, if you go enter into life, what do you have to do? Keep the commandments. That's period. You think he lied to the man? He said, period. If you're going to do something, keep the commandments. So our next question is going to be, all right, which ones? Let's see. And he said unto him, which? Right? Next question will always be, all right, which one? Let's see how Yahushua told him uh, all of them. Let's see how Yahushua told him, uh, make sure you keep the Sabbath. Let's see how Yahushua said, make sure, make sure you don't eat no darn pork. Let's see all the stuff that Yahushua told him. Let's see. Make sure you have fringes at the bottom of your shirt. Let's hear what commandments Yahushua told me you got to keep to enter into life. Thou shalt do no murder. He said you can't murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You don't commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. You don't steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't lie. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor your mama and your daddy. All right. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He said love thy neighbor as thyself. And what else? And the young man said unto him. He said, you want to enter into life? Let me help you out. Which commandment? Let me help you out. These are the commandments you need to do. What did the young man said after that? And the young man said unto him, all these things I have kept from my youth. He said, all of these things I kept since I was a kid. What did he say next? What lack I yet? He said, but what do I lack yet? Watch what Yahushua say back to him. And Yahushua said unto him, if thou will be perfect. He said, if you, if you want to enter into the kingdom. He said, if you will be perfect. No, he said, if you want to be perfect. It's one thing. He said, listen, you want to enter into the kingdom? Do the commandments. If you want to be perfect, though. Right? If you want to reach perfection. Grab, hold we got. We're going to come back there. Don't let me forget we're coming back here. Grab uh, Matthew chapter 5. All right, this is a hang-up for a lot of our brethren on each side. Our brethren that's, that's Christian and our brethren that's Hebrew Israelite. On each side, they hang up on this stuff. Hebrew Israelite right now, they're turning off the channel because they heard me heard me tell them that, uh, you know what I'm saying, Yahweh sure didn't tell them to keep the Sabbath. What am I lying that he did? You know, the, you know what they come up with? This is what they tell you. This is what Hebrew Israelite going to tell you. So you got to keep the whole law, brother. If you don't keep the whole law, you transgress the, you transgress the whole law. Okay, I get you. All right, then they, then they hit you with this. So a Christian is going to come back and be like, well, why didn't Yahushua, why didn't Jesus tell us to keep the Sabbath when he told the young man, you know what I'm saying, you do these, you enter into life. They don't say, you know what, the Sabbath, brother, everybody already knew you had to keep the Sabbath. Jesus didn't even, he didn't even need to mention that. Right, to the, when he said he came to, you know said for the world, the Gentiles also, who wasn't told. Wasn't told. But look, I mean, just think about the logic. Everybody know you got to keep the Sabbath. Everybody don't know you, you're not supposed to commit, commit adultery? Right. That everybody must have forgot that. Everybody don't know that uh, you can't murder? That's just not even a given in Israel, huh? Right? Do all these other things. You, oh, you, you can, you, nobody know about honoring your mother and father. That thing, that thing is just oblivious to that. 
In the Ten Commandments, we built our whole thing off of that. Don't come to me about this logic that y'all use. Everybody, the only reason he didn't mention it because he knew everybody knew. He ain't going to mention the dietary law because he knew everybody. He spoke to these Gentiles and come up once. Keeping the Sabbath and eating, eating foods and come up, come up once. Matter of fact, they mention eating foods and every time you see it throughout the New Testament, it's always telling them relax. Eat what you need to eat. Right? It is. They don't don't cause your brother to stumble. That's all you know. That's the only requirement. So now we have to deal with that. I'm a Hebrew to the core. Right? I keep the law. I, I uphold the law. But at the same time, I'm not about to lie on the book because I want everybody to keep the law. I want y'all to keep the law. At the same time, I'm gonna tell you what the book says. I ain't about to lie on the book. The man ain't tell you to keep the law just now. What I'm gonna do? Make it up? Not the part of the laws that they talking about anyway. He didn't tell you to keep no law. We know what the law. We can go through that thing right now. He didn't tell you to go back and keep what Moses is talking about. He didn't tell you to. He didn't tell you not to, but he didn't tell you to. He told you, enter into light. Do, this is what you need to do. Then he said, if you want to be perfect, and we're going to get back to that. This is Matthew chapter 5. Give me verse 17. I was going to start Lord. We might as well start verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Uh huh. But verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. That got the Christian. The Christian done. Because the Christian, oh my, now the Christian don't there. They like, oh yeah, they like hitting the like button. They do all that. Because the Christian's in there, they like, oh, that's what I like. See, you ain't got to keep no law. Because nobody perfect. You know what I'm saying? That's what they, that, that what they, that, that what they think we getting at. No, nah, you're but done there. Book just told you law ain't done away with. What you gonna do with it? Now we gotta figure it out because we know Yahushua just told him you gotta keep these certain commandments to enter into the kingdom. He didn't enter, say nothing about Sabbath. He didn't say nothing about dietary law, right? So that fact we know if you wanna enter into life, you just gotta do what Yahushua told you to do. But at the same time, same Yahushua just came back to you and said that thing ain't done away with. The whole law, everything the Moses was talking about. And one jot and tittle that they ain't done away with. So now we got to deal with that. That seems like a contradiction to most people. Right? Keep going. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Uh huh. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the, these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be he called. He's going to go to hell. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Book just said he's going to be in the kingdom. Book just told you he's going to be the least in the kingdom. Right? Now let's see if that makes sense. Young man walked up to Yahushua. The young man said, what do I need to do to enter into life? Yahushua turned back to him. He said, if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Young man said, which ones? So he listened them things off to him. He said, don't murder. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Right? Honor your mother and your father. Don't be right? with me. Don't bear false witness and love your neighbor as yourself. Right? He laid them out for him. Like, okay, look, you do that, you'll do well. The man said, oh, man, I've been doing that since my youth. He said, I've been doing that. I've been doing that since my youth. In and guess what? Huh? In another place, I think it's Luke. He said, y'all should have looked at him and loved him. So that's how you know he wasn't a liar. I wish I would have found that thing. I think it might be Luke. We'll find that thing next time. Right? We look at it, that's a good book. Right? You look at it, and the man said, I've been doing that since my youth. Yahushua, you know what Yahushua said? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. The kid, he asked, he said, uh, so what yet I lack? What do I lack? What do I need still? Yahushua came back to him and said, oh, well, if you want to be <coughs> perfect. Right? Yeah, because if he didn't keep the commandments, he would have stopped lying. If he didn't keep the commandments, it'd be done. You're not even in the running. Right? That's why I come back and it said, if you break these commandments, talking about the whole law. He ain't talking about just a couple commandments within the law. He said, if you break even the least of these commandments, what are you going to be in the kingdom? Least in the kingdom. You ain't perfect. You in there. Just like the young man. The young man came up to him. He said, you know what? Listen, what I got to do? I'll just keep these. I mean, I ain't, I ain't going to give you the whole law to keep. I'm just going to give you a couple of commandments. You keep these. That's enough to get in. Right? Then the man said, what do I get? He said, you know what? If you want to be perfect, that means there's a higher state to get to. 
<laughs> Look what it tell you right here. He said he only, did he give him the whole law or some of the law? He gave him some of it. He gave him some of the law. So if he only kept the son that he told him, technically he'd be breaking the rest of it, right? Right? If he, if I only, if I did only what Yahushua told me and I didn't do anything else that's in the law, I would be breaking the rest of the law. Right? So let's hear what this book said. This is verse 17. Verse 19. This is verse 19. I want. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments. So if you break one of the least commandments, what's going to happen to you? And shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You'll be the least in the kingdom of heaven. You'll get into the kingdom, but you'll be the least if you break it. That's why he told the man, you just do these. You'll be all right. He said, okay, what do I lack? Because now y'all sure look like, oh, you're not just looking to get in. Oh, you're trying to be great in that thing. Let me tell you what you need to do. We're going to go back to what he need to do. He said, let me tell you what you need to do. Read the next verse. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. If you do them and you teach them, you will be great in the kingdom of heaven. Keep going. Let's hear about perfection. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. That thing be touching some people. Some people tell you, see, you got to exceed the scribes and the Pharisees. Like that thing a difficult task. <laughs> the man ran down the fair, what was that, uh, chapter 23? Yeah. He ran down the scribes and Pharisees for a whole chapter talking about they hypocrites. You think it's hard to exceed? Everybody be looking at that thing. They, 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 you know what I'm saying? Them, them Hebrew is like, no, you got to exceed the, like the scribes and the Pharisees with some pillar of, of, of and right. some example of righteousness. That thing had a hard day. He just tell you, you can't be a hypocrite. That's it. You can't be a hypocrite. You got to know it and do it. That's why he told you, the man who teach it and does. Say it again. Read it, read it for verse 18 or verse 19. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom. If you do it and teach it, I'm not talking about just teach it like a scribe. I'm not talking about just teach it like a Pharisee, but you do it. That's why the next verse he tells you, you got to exceed them because they're hypocrites. They talk about it, but they don't do it. So they Keep going. Moses seat. You listen to them when they in Moses seat. But he said know. when they in Moses seat, you do what they say now, boy. Don't, don't mess yourself up. Do what they darn say when they in Moses' seat. But man, don't you do none of the stuff that they be darn doing. What chapter is that? 19, he said that? I don't remember. Oh, man. Most I got him. That mine ain't sharp tonight. That's all right, wasn't though. That, wasn't it 23? Because that's when he started getting right off. Oh, we got there. Let's go to 23. We hold, So we holding right here in Matthew chapter 5. And then we also holding... Uh, what else we holding? Well, we also holding Matthew... Chapter 19. Yeah. Verse and now we're about to now we're about to go to Matthew chapter 23. And eventually we gotta get back to Deuteronomy so that we can uh we can pick up where we lost off. So you're not going back to John. No, we're not. Did I say we're going back to John? No. You, no, we good on John. No, we should be holding. Did I say hold John? What we holding in John? Mm, I know, I know. Yeah, that's. Let's hold. We should be holding. We should be holding Matthew, chapter nineteen. We should be holding Matthew chapter five, and now we're going to Matthew twenty-three. We gonna hit Matthew twenty-three. God willing, we gonna go back to Matthew chapter five. Then we gonna head back to Matthew nineteen. We're going to try to understand this stuff. Then we're going to, go, then we're going to talk about the commandments. Then we're going to go to Deuteronomy and talk about what the Most High God did for our people. All right, this is verse 1, 23, 1. This is, uh, this is Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Yeah, watch no. what he said about the, about the scribes and the Pharisees. He said you got to exceed their righteousness. Watch, watch how you talk about these people. Then spake Yahushua to the multitudes and uh -huh. to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. He said they sit in Moses' seat. What does that mean? They read the law. They in the position. He said they in the position that Moses held. That's authority at that point. Right? Keep going. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe. He said whatever they tell you, you do what they talking about. They talking to you about the law. Right? When they doing that, that's Moses' authority there. They in the same seat as Moses. And whatever they tell you, you do what they say. You observe it. But watch this. 
that observe and do. Uh huh. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Right? They be running their darn mouth, but guess what they don't do? The same stuff they be talking about. So now, if you go back to chapter 5, verse what? 18 or 19? Uh, a 20. Verse 20? Yeah. This chapter 5, verse 20, watch what it say. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now you see why the man told you you got to exceed. You can't just run your darn mouth about it and do something different like the scribes and Pharisees do. Right? Books say, man, you got to do you got to do it exactly how you talking. You running your mouth about that stuff, you need to uphold it. All right, hold we got real quick. Go to go to Romans chapter 2. <laughs> Give me Romans chapter 1. Right. It's Romans chapter 1. Give me Romans chapter 1. What's the last verse? 28? 27? <laughs> what are we looking at? What's the last verse? Uh, 32. 32. Good. Okay. Uh, give, me, uh, give me Romans chapter 1 verse... Verse 29. Being filled with an unrighteous fornication and wickedness. Mm-hmm. We good. Okay. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, mm -hmm. whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient of parents, without understandings, covenant breakers, without natural affection, Im implacable, unmerciful who knowing the judgment of God they that that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them therefore thou he art, said they know the judgment of God they had a knowledge that the most high God gonna judge all these things that they do and they not only do them still but they have pleasure in other people doing them as well right keep going watch this Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man. He said, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, who do what? Whosoever you are that judges, for wherein you judge another, you condemn yourself. For he you. said, He said, You doing it, and you telling other people they should be judged for it. He said, Don't you understand you are inexcusable? Because wherein you judge somebody else, you condemn yourself. The same word. He didn't, you know what he didn't tell him? He didn't tell him what you're teaching is a lie. He didn't tell him that. He didn't tell the Pharisees that either. Y'all sure didn't tell the Y'all sure ain't gonna say and stand up there and be like, listen, what those Pharisees teach you, don't listen to it because they hypocrites. He never told him that. He never told him that. He told you, whatever they tell you to do, you do it. Because when they talking, they teaching you the law. What they teaching is right. You know what's wrong though? The way they handle it. Don't follow after what they're doing. He come back, same thing here. He said, thou art inexcusable, old man. He said, because if you judge another and then doing that, you condemn yourself. He not telling them, oh, you judging and what you saying about that person is incorrect. He said, no, you right about it. I'm just telling you what you said about them. That thing, same thing apply to you. You doing the same thing they doing. Keep going, watch this. For thou that judges does the same things. Uh-huh. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Mm -hmm. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things. He said, what you think, you going to get away from it? And does the same, that you shall escape the judgment of God? Nobody gets by. Nobody gets by. That they touching everybody. Saint, sinner, don't matter what you are. Everybody didn't sin. Most like God reaching out, touching everybody. Everybody going to have to bow down. Only thing is, you know what I'm saying, you just got to choose between, do you want that rock to fall on you and grind you to powder, or you just want to fall on it and be broken? You know what I'm saying? You just got to make a choice. You know what I'm saying? Which one of them things you want? Everybody going to get touched. There ain't no way around it. Everybody getting touched. It's just like how you want it, audio or cardio. You know what I'm talking about? Like how you want that thing? You just want it in the rap verse or you want the real thing to happen? That's how, that's how Lil Wayne tried to put it. You know what I'm saying? You want audio or cardio? Most of the guys trying to tell you the same. You just want it in the Bible verse? You know what I'm saying? Or you want me to reach out there and really touch it, boy? Right? That's how we have to look at this. 
it's a losing game. There's not an odd. There's no odds that we can look at and be like, okay, I'm going to come out of this thing unscathed. No, you either going to suffer now or you're going to suffer later. How do you want it? The man giving you a choice. One way, I'm going to give you life if you do it. If you do it my way, I'm going to give you life. That thing ain't going to hurt the same. Don't worry about it. It going to hurt the same. You don't have to give up a lot. But one way, I'm going to give you life. This other way, you stuck. You enjoy what you got for the temporary because you stuck forever. These people teach us all the time about investment. They, they, they pretend like they teach us a little bit. Right? About investing, about about what we what we want to build. And sometimes, you know, you see a lot of people, they go, that's what, uh, that's what these people on TV going through now. You got people that sacrifice so much just to get something in this life. But they don't understand it when we say, okay, well, let me sacrifice everything I got to live forever. That thing makes sense. It makes sense when you're talking about the stock market. It makes sense when you're talking about, it's a, it's a, uh, a twice talk. You know what I'm saying? Twice talk. We was up there, we were doing the show. And a young lady came on there, she got a clothing line. And she said, in order to get her clothing line off of the off of the ground, she said what she had to do is she had she had her own place, single mom, she was doing her thing, had her own place, all right. But she said, in order to get her place off the ground, she said, I had to humble. That thing touched me. She said, I had to humble myself. Get rid of my home. I thought she was married. Go live, yeah. Ain't none of my business. Got to go live with my uh my my mama, my grandma. You know what I'm saying? And at that point, you know what I'm saying, kind of stack my cheese. Stack it, stack it, stack it. Get enough money. And then uh invest that into a, a, a business. Right? So it's like, you look at that and it's like, that's commendable. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you willing to suffer, be uncomfortable for right now. Because you see something coming, you know that it's going to happen. Like, you know that you believe in what you're doing, and it's going to happen. I'm just trying to figure out why that thing's so unbelievable when it comes to the most high God. I'm just trying to figure out why it's so like, oh, that's so crazy when it comes to the most high God. Ain't nothing but an investment. Ain't that what the man told him? He said, he said in, in the parable that y'all was told him, didn't he tell him, I'm going to leave each one of y'all with money. I'm going to leave you with this much, you with this much, you with this much. Then it tell you, this gentleman, he went out and invested in this. Came back, a, you know, tenfold or whatever it was. He did, this gentleman, he went out, he came, came back fivefold. But then there was one who had the one penny. Who remember what happened to his? What did he do with that one penny? <laughs> he hid it in the ground. He hid it in the ground. Why he hid it in the ground, T? He said, because you're a hard man. He, he said, I knew you was an austere man. You was a hard man. You reap what you don't sow. You reap what you don't sow. Most like God came back to him and said, you knew I was a hard man. You knew I reap what I don't sow. At least you could have did it, took it to the exchanges. <laughs> you knew I was going to come back. You know I ain't playing. You know I'm going to get some butt. You knew that already. So you thought you were too scared to lose what I gave you instead of doing what I told you to do with it. A lot of people in the position of losing what we spending it. We spending it. Keep reading. Watch this. Watch out. Watch out. This is, uh, this is the most I got. Watch out. Paul tied this whole thing together. Watch this. Or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. We spend it. If we don't go, if he giving us goodness, giving us goodness, giving us goodness, whole time he say invest that so that you can live forever. But we don't. Don't you know the man looking at us? Uh, you hate what I'm giving you. You despise it. You knew I was a hard man. You knew I reap what I don't sow. Yet you still out here sinning and sinning and sinning after I'm still giving you opportunities. That don't make no sense to the most high God. Keep going. Watch this. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, uh -huh. treasures, up thy, treasures up unto thyself, wrath against the day of wrath, and uh -huh. revelation of the righteous judgment of God, uh -huh. who will render to every man according to his deeds. So now what you guess what you just invested in? By continuing to sin, guess what you just invested in? The wrath. No matter what, you're making an investment. You're making an investment. It's just which one do you, which, you know what I'm saying, which portfolio you want to get? How you want that thing to turn out? You want to end up belly up or balling? 
That's how that thing play out. Either way. The man gonna give it to you either way. Man, you alright? Man gonna give it to you either way. Let's grab uh let's go back to where we were. Where were we at? We had uh, Matthew chapter five. We probably verse twenty one. Yeah, verse twenty. I don't know, we might not even get to do the run tonight. Good gracious. <laughs> In Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. Watch what the book say. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. Man, I already told you, he said, your, your righteousness has to exceed that of the Pharisees and the scribes. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. He said, you heard it. They used to tell you, thou shalt not kill. That's Moses' law. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. He said, if you, if you kill, you in danger of being judged. Right? What else? But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. He said, even if you angry with your brother and you ain't got no reason for it, you in danger of judgment. What is y'all sure doing at this point? I'm telling them to uh, treat your neighbor as yourself. All right, let's keep going. <clears throat> and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. He said, if you say Raka to your brother, right? Basically insulting your brother intelligence, right? In Hebrew, that's what that's doing, right? He said, if you do that to your brother, you in danger of the council. He said, you might, you might be judged just for doing that. Watch this. It's going to become clear with the man doing it in a second. Watch but, this. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Uh-huh. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there rememberest that thy brother has aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Right? He said, he said I'd rather you Go settle it with your brother than to come and make offering to me. Y'all was always trying to teach us something right now. Right? Keep going. Agree with thine adversary quickly whilst thou art in the way with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison. He said that's just practical. He said just, just make peace real quick. Settle that thing real quick. Don't be holding on to stuff. Don't be holding any grudges. If something happens, just let that thing go. Keep moving. Right? Keep it moving. I told y'all, I think I told y'all last week, we got to learn to let stuff slide. Some of this stuff just got to slide. We can't be holding on, keeping account of all this stuff. Some of this stuff just got to slide. Right? Keep going. Really, I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Uh huh. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. He said, He said, it used to be said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Watch this though. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. He said, You even put your eyes on her, right? And you put your eyes on her for lust, you already committed adultery in your heart. Right? It's going to become clear what the man doing. Watch this. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is pro pro profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Uh-huh. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Uh-huh. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Uh-huh. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, except for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. Yeah, and, and be clear what that fornication is. That don't mean you married your wife, and then she went out, and she slept around on you, so therefore you can, put, you can divorce your wife. That's not what fornication is talking about. Fornication is talking about you thought you were marrying a virgin. Right? She told you she told you she was a virgin. Her parents told you that she is a virgin. And then you married her under that agreement and you found out she fornicated before y'all came together. That's what he said. For that reason, you can put her away. Right? Other than that, book said y'all married. Keep going. That thing 
ain't tough. That thing is tough, because now, now people got to deal with it. I've been married once, then I got divorced, then I got married again because I really fell in love. Now you got to deal with it. I'm going to say, we had people walking here and had to walk out. They ain't been back darn since we teach, uh, touch on this one. I make sure I see a married couple coming here, I make sure I touch on it. Because I ain't about to let you. I ain't, uh, one thing I'm not about to do is let nobody sit in here and sin without hearing the truth. If I spotted you married, well, let's just make sure it's your first marriage. I'm going to touch on this thing. It's going to make you uncomfortable. I'll be watching their faces, too. They sit there squirming, looking at each other like, mm-hmm. I see that thing happen multiple times. Hey, but don't come back either. I'm fine with it, too. Don't come back until y'all darn split. And it ain't that I, I like love, man. I like I like when two people get along and be able to work together. I ain't, I ain't against love at all. I am against sin, though. If your love got to come from sin, that thing ain't love. Books say love don't rejoice in iniquity. There's no way in the world you can be on your second marriage and call yourself in love with somebody. That's crazy. That don't make no sense. You definitely don't love God then. Now you love man more than you love God. That make a whole lot of sense. All right? Keep going. Keep going. What the book say? Ain't none of these books. Saving though. for the cause of fornication. Uh-huh. Causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced commits adultery. Mm-hmm. Again, you have heard that it's. You have heard that it has been said by them of old time, "Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths." Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, mm -hmm. nor by the earth, for it is His footstool, mm -hmm. neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great King. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou cannot make one hair white or black. Mm -hmm. But let your communication be yes. And yes, that your communication be yes for yes and no for no. He says, stop being extra. Right? Watch what he say now. Anything else what? For whatsoever is more than these comes from evil. He said, you doing more than that. That thing, that thing just might be coming from evil. All right? Keep going. Ye have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Uh-huh. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. Uh-huh. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him... The other also. He said, if he smites you on your right cheek, at the end of the day, you need to turn the other cheek. It's going to become clear what the man trying to tell you to do right now. Keep going. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Uh-huh. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. He said, if somebody compel you, man, just come with me one more mile. He said, go two miles with him. Right? Keep going. These y'all sure commandments here. Give to him that asks of thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Right? Anybody want to borrow something, don't turn away from them. They ask you for something, give it to them. Watch this. You have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Uh-huh. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you. Mm -hmm. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. They use you and they persecute you. Pray for them. Right? Keep going. That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. Uh huh. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Uh huh. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? He said, That's easy money. You love somebody that love you. Do, right? Do not even the publicans the same? He said, The worst people that y'all can think of love people that love them. He said, What's, that? What's in that? And if ye salute your brother and only, what do ye more than others? Uh huh. Do not even the publicans so? Uh huh. But ye therefore be ye therefore perfect, even as your father. Be ye therefore what? Perfect. Be ye therefore what? Perfect. Even as your look father. Look at what the book says. Whole time we looking at, it, we like, oh, that's tight, y'all. Sure. That thing tight. I gotta turn the other cheek. Ooh, that's tight. What's he trying to tell you the whole time? He trying to teach you how to be perfect. He trying to teach you how to be perfect the whole time. He trying to tell you, this is not. This is not the regular standard. You want to be perfect? This is how you do it. Right? This is how you do it. And you want to know it's crazy? A lot of stuff in our law. A lot of stuff in our law. Right? What's even more crazy is people say it's impossible to be perfect. That's even more crazy. 
man just tells you how he gave you the game plan to perfection. And then he told you at the end of it, be ye perfect as your father is perfect. Yeah. Right? And they're gonna say it's impossible. You know what's even more crazy? Let's go to Matthew chapter 20, uh, Matthew chapter 19. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 19. We is holding it. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 19. What verse did we leave off? Uh, 21. It's Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. Yahushua said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go He said, If thou wilt be perfect, Go and sell that thou hast and give it to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Remember what he told us. He said, somebody asked you for something, give it to him. Right? He said, sell everything you got, give it to the poor. Then you will build for yourself treasure in heaven. That's how you become perfect. Watch what happened. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Uh-huh. Then said Yahshua unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh huh. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Uh huh. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed. He's talking about amazed. perfection. Look, he said, he, said, he already told them how to be perfect, perfect. Right? How to reach perfection. Right? Then he told them, he used that as a moment. He told them, listen, it's going to be hard for a lot of these rich, rich folks to enter into the kingdom. Right? Watch this. Keep going, though. And his disciples heard it. They were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? He said, Who gonna be saved? Yeah. Watch what Yahushua said. Yahushua. Because, because you know what people gonna tell you? It's impossible to be perfect. But watch this. But Yahushua beheld them and said unto them, With men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So now, if they read that and they still come back and tell us it's impossible, after the man just told you how many things are impossible, most things? All things. I mean, at least a few things? All things. Man just told you all things are, in, are possible for him. So when they say... So now that means that when I say something is impossible, I'm talking, you know how Christians like to do it. See, it's the natural man. You know, they, you know how they like to do it. So that means that's the natural man that Christian talking about. You, you mean to tell me this whole time pastor been preaching... That been the natural man running the dark mouth? Had to be. First Corinthians, this is uh first Corinthians chapter two. Had to be the natural man. And so when they were like it's impossible to stop sinning, the man just said, All things are possible with God. That means God ain't in what they talking about. That, I mean, if I'm reading the book, that's the only way I can take it. If you tell me it's impossible to stop sinning, it's impossible to be perfect, it's impossible, it's impossible. And this is what God said in the book. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Give me verse 1. And it's in, it's in the most high book. Very clearly. Sin no more. Repent from all sin. And you tell me that what he said is impossible. He tell you, be ye perfect like your father in heaven. And you tell me that is impossible. And then the man tell me, well, with man this is impossible. But with God, all things are impossible. And you tell me it's impossible, I have to look at it. That's just the natural man. That's the carnal man talking right there. This whole time I've been hearing the book from preachers that's preaching from the carnal man. They ain't talking about no spirit, they talking about carnal man. I've been getting direction from the carnal man this whole time. I've been running around church, speaking in tongues, jumping up and down, praising God to their praise song, hitting tambour darn rings. Right? Cartwheeling, dancing, crip walking, all that stuff, all because of the natural man. The spirit ain't never touched none of these people. Not God's. Right? He ain't touched none of these people. Everything that we've been hearing been natural. Everything we've been taught been taught from a natural point of view. Anytime the most high God break out trying to show you something supernatural, guess what we talking about? That's impossible. That's impossible. You want to know a supernatural? Turning away from sin. These people want to see somebody walk on water today. That's light work for God. Turn away from sin. I'll show you something real nice. Turn away from sin. You want to see a miracle? Turn away. Stop sinning. You want to believe me? Stop sinning. Everybody want to see a lightning bolt come out the sky. 
I better stop playing with the man. Watch what, uh, watch what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 say. Got to be coming from the natural man. And I, brother, and when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, uh -huh. declaring unto you the testimony of God. Mm -hmm. For I determined not to know anything among you except Yahushua and him crucified. Uh -huh. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Uh -huh. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. He said, I don't have time to be sitting here trying to convince y'all by trying to tap dance and make sure y'all y'all believe me and and throw little bells and whistles in the sermon and all. He said, no, nah, man. What I came here with is the spirit and the word. That's it. I'm just giving you, I'm just giving it to you raw. Exactly how the word said and with the spirit. You're going to see power for yourself. Keep going. Watch this. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Because, I mean, if I get up here with a fancy video with sliders all on it and graphics and cartoons and all that stuff. All that stuff is night. All that stuff is real night. But what happened when that video stopped flashing and all the all the graphics stopped coming? Ain't no more cartoons and I'm just speaking the word. I, mean, I don't want to watch that. That's boring. So guess guess what had my attention? Was it the word or was it the graphics? We ain't got, we ain't got time for that. And why we get in here and we get the long hard word? You know what I'm saying? Open up this book, the long boring word. That put you to sleep word. If that thing is that if that don't keep you up, I don't know what's I don't know what's happening for you. I'm fine with it. That thing don't bother me. I hear the word, it don't touch you, that's good. That's on God. That ain't on me. I did my part. That thing either gonna touch you now, it's gonna touch you later. What that thing got to do with me? I just come with the words. Look at Paul, keep going. But we speak the wisdom of God. Wait. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Uh huh. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes. Uh huh. Of this world. Amongst those that are perfect. Keep going. That came to nothing. Uh huh. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. The hidden wisdom. Tell us more. Which none of the princes of this world knew. They didn't know nothing about it. None of the princes of the world knew about it. I wonder why. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Okay. But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man uh -huh. the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Uh-huh. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Uh-huh. For the spirit searches all things. The yea, spirit does what? Searches all things. Okay. Yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man? For what man knoweth the things of man, except the spirit of man which is in him? Uh-huh. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Okay. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we so we know it's two different spirits, right? It's more than one spirit. There's a lot of these people that they confuse confusing now. They think they're getting some spirit and they're thinking, oh, this is the spirit of God. I'm just trying to help y'all out. A lot of this stuff y'all jumping around doing, that thing, that thing got nothing to do with God. I'm trying to tell you, y'all been sitting here getting what's carnal. Y'all be getting the natural man preaching y'all the book. We ain't talking about no power. These people ain't talking about power. They sitting there talk, telling you it's impossible. Go ask your pastor. This is one, listen, it's one thing that'll divide everybody. It's a, it's a lot of people that hit me up and be like, yeah, yeah, man, I, I listen to this other pastor. He sound, he be preaching just like you preach. First thing I do, okay, I'll check him out for you, bro. I, I'll check him out. First thing I do, I look at it. You can't get in, you can't get 30 minutes into any of these God verses without them saying something slick on sin. You know, and you know, and everybody's saying sometimes, but God save you regard. Okay. That got that. Uh, yeah, he's a liar. <laughs> That got that got we good. Just, just ask, you wanna do it, you wanna do a test? Is my let's just do you know they do them challenges. What do you call it? Pound a hashtag. You put a hashtag on it. This this is how you gotta do it. Just put a hashtag on it. Is my pastor, this is the is my pastor carnal hashtag. Hashtag is my pastor carnal. Right? This is a new challenge. We're gonna start that thing like the ice bucket. We just want everybody to have a video. Walk up to your pastor and tell them. Is it impossible to stop sinning today on earth before I die? Because be, you got to get specific. They'd get slick as all outdoor. Let me tell you, brother, one day, 
God is going to bring us into heaven and there ain't going to be no more sin. So no, it's not impossible. We need to stop saying, no, 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 no. Is it impossible today, right now, for me to turn away from all sin for the rest of my life before Yahushua come back, before Jesus come back? Just ask that question. That's going to give you everything you need to know. If the man of God tell you, no, that ain't impossible. That's what the book says. That's a man of God. He might make mistakes. He might do something, but he got a hard principle there. As long as he's learning from his mistakes, as long as he, he, he admit, all right, I was wrong about that. Let me correct. He got the heart. He got the foundation of the truth. We can turn from sin, and that's what God requires of us. You got that? That's the foundation of the truth. From there, it's things that we don't understand. You might run, you might not be able to break down break down uh, revelations. You know what I'm saying? You might not be able to break that thing down. But you got enough information with that, you can get a man into the kingdom. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for somebody that can get us into the kingdom. You ask your pastor that. He come back and tell you, no, that's what the, that the books say. And no, it ain't impossible. It ain't never impossible for something that the books say. You got it. You keep going. Right? He may, look, he may be a Sunday worshiper. <laughs> that man good in my book. He going to church on Sunday. He good in my book. We can work on the rest of it. He got the principle. He know how serious the most, everything else is ignorance at that point. He know how serious the most high God is at that point. He can have a cross sitting behind him. On his podium, he can have a cross, a book with a cross. We can work with that. He's still a sinner now. Don't get me wrong. He's sinning. He just don't know. Because had he knew he was sinning, he just told you, you got to turn away from sin. He just don't know he said we can work on the rest of that stuff. Right? I don't care how right anybody sound, if they don't get that one, you good. That's the foundation. Nobody, I can tell you one thing. Nobody is getting into the I don't care how much you know about revelations, how much you can break down who Israelites are, the white Jewish people taking over to I don't care how much stuff you think you know. If you haven't turned away from sin, you ain't getting in. That got that so. So why are we killing time with a whole bunch of other stuff if we ain't got that part down pat? It just don't make sense. Now, if your pastor come back, you know what I'm saying, you do is my pastor carnal challenge, your pastor come back and say, no, see, brother, see, that's legalistic. Or here, come back and be like, see, that's what we need. Jesus. If you think that you can turn away from sin, that's self-righteousness, brother. You need Jesus. Jesus died because you couldn't do it. He hit you with that voodoo. Be like, all right, yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> that boy lying. Yeah, you. And he, he started hitting with that. I appreciate you, Todd. I talk to you. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm just going to head that way. Now, service is about to start, brother. I know. I'm about to head that way. I'll catch you later. You get on up out of there. You get out of there like that thing is on fire. That's, if you want to line these peoples up, put the truth in front of them. It's one thing the devil ain't going to lie to you about. He ain't going to, he ain't going to, he can't, let me say it differently. It's one thing that the devil can't lie to you about. He can't lie to you and tell you that you got to keep what the most high God, did, that you have to turn away from sin. He can't lie to you and tell you that. He going to stay away from that. So all the people that's been deceived, that's how you just, I mean, you just lay it out. The rest of that stuff, they'll go with. Yeah, this, yeah, the Bible's revelation. This is what it means. And they'll be right too. Revelation, this is what it means. This is what it means. Because all that stuff, that's not a deal breaker for God. You know what the deal breaker is? Are you obeying my word? That's the deal breaker. That's the one area none of these people are going to get it right unless they obey the Most High God. Unless they call by the Most High God. All right? Keep going. Verse. You better separate what these spirits are. A lot of these spirits ain't, these spirits ain't got nothing to do with God. Where we at? Uh, 13. It's verse 13. Watch what the book says. Wait, 12. Verse 12. Watch what the book say. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of the, that which is of God, uh -huh. that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, uh -huh. which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, uh -huh. but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now notice what he said. He said the things that we teach, and guess what it's not? It's not in the, in the ways that man's wisdom teaches. But it's in the ways that what? The Holy Ghost teaches. I'm trying to tell y'all something different, he said. There's a lot of people out here running their darn mouth. I'm trying to tell y'all something different, he said. He said, the Spirit is teaching what I'm teaching. 
Right? The way we get it is the spirit. Keep going. Watch this. But the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So now if the most high God sit here and send his son on earth. Who was made by his spirit. And the man come back and he tell you be ye perfect. He tell you sin no more. And he tell you, you know what, some of that stuff might seem impossible with man. But with God, all things are possible. That super spiritual message wouldn't be received by the natural man. Is that what we just read? Let me see, read it one more time. I just want to make sure I didn't miss nothing. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for that, they are foolishness unto him. He said, that's not going to make no sense. That's not going to make no sense. He said, the natural man is not going to make sense to the natural man. Keep going. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Uh-huh. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Mm -hmm. But we have the mind of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the chapter. Keep going. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babies in the Messiah. He said, I couldn't even speak unto you unto spiritual. Why? Why wouldn't Paul be able to speak unto him as spiritual? What did he just get done telling us? He said, y'all was carnal. If I said it to you, I just got done telling you the spiritual thing can't be discerned by the natural man. Because they're spiritually discerned. So he told him, he explained all that just to lay it on him. That's why I broke off to the next chapter. He's like, now y'all understand that. Now y'all understand why I couldn't even speak on the y'all spirit. I came to y'all just teaching flat word. Y'all didn't understand it. The word is the he said, so now I gotta come. I couldn't even speak on the y'all spirit. I had to come up to y'all as carnal. He didn't say he was carnal. He said, I had to come to you like something that was carnal. Let's see, keep going. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. I had to give you the basics. I couldn't get deep. I'm going to talk to you about revelations. I'm going to talk to you about all these, all these extra things. He said, you ain't going to be able to understand this stuff. You're going to make a mess out of it. You know what I had to start with? The milk. Right? Repentance from dead works. Faith towards God. Right? What's the other one? Laying on the hands. Baptism. Judgment. In eternal life. Right? According to the book of Hebrews, that's the milk. That's the basics. Guess what it started with? Repent. Repent. Turn your butt from sin. All right, keep going. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Uh huh. For while one says I am of Paul and another I am of Apollos, one says I'm a Calvinist, the other says I'm a Baptist. Are ye not carnal? One says one says I'm Pentecostal, the other says I'm I'm a I'm a, a, a Church of Christ. Are you not carnal? Show me where any of this is in the book. Are you not carnal? Keep going. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom ye believed as the Lord gave to every man? I'm trying to tell you, y'all don't have to believe me. All this stuff y'all been hearing, all this stuff we didn't learn in church came from the perspective of a carnal man or a carnal woman who didn't have no business preaching. All this stuff that we looked at, it came from the perspective of carnal, of a natural man who didn't believe in the power of the most all God. They thought they did. They've been taught they did. They've been confused. They've been lied to. I'm not trying to assign blame. I'm just trying to tell you where it is. We can talk about why they were there. We can talk about who, who led them to believe that. I don't care. I'm trying to tell you at the end of the day, you ain't getting the truth. You gotta have a man of God that'll stand on top and to tell you you can turn away from sin. Oh, not only can you, you're gonna have to if you want to see the kingdom. You're gonna have to keep these commandments if you're gonna want to see the kingdom. Oh, you wanna be perfect. Oh, we're gonna have to do all of this. You wanna be great in the kingdom? 
you have to keep all the law. You want to be perfect, you have to sell everything you got. You have to give up everything. You have to turn the other cheek. Don't even react. Don't even get mad at your brother unless you got a cause. Don't call him stupid. Don't call him a fool. You want to be perfect? Don't even look on the other women. Not with no lust. Don't even look at them like that. You want to be perfect? Right? We talking about perfection? That's what you got to do. Or you want to get it in? Just make sure you don't do these. Right? That's the whole book. Grab for me, uh, what did I say? Did we did I did I touch everything that I said we were gonna hold? Mm. We went back to Matthew 5. We good there. We went back to Matthew 19. That's what we reading, right? Well, we, we came from Matthew 19. Let's go back to Matthew 19, make sure we didn't miss something. Uh we was done with Matthew 23, right? Yeah, we done Matthew 23. In Matthew chapter 19, I don't know what verse we left off on. 26. It's Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Let me see it. Make sure it ain't nothing else we need here. But y'all sure beheld them and said unto them, With man it is impossible. Uh -huh. But with God all things are possible. Mm -hmm. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. He said, We have forsaken all and followed thee. Watch this. What shall we have therefore? And Yahshua said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory. He said, in the regeneration, what's that? The resurrection. A lot of people don't understand. That regeneration, that's that's resurrection. He's not talking about, see, a lot of people think we die, we go right to heaven. That ain't book. Book say it's going to be a regeneration. That means it's right here. He said he restoring things at, at right up here. And he said he going to sit on the throne. And he said, they're going to do what? They're going to sit where? The Son of Man, when the Son of Man shall sit on his throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the tribes of Israel. Twelve tribes of Israel. It's going to be twelve tribes of Israel in the regeneration. Right? And he said, the apostles going to judge those twelve tribes. Right? And when they judge them, guess whose seat they're going to be sitting in? Moses' seat. They're going to be sitting in Moses' seat. Right? That's why the law, that's why I tell you, if you keep all the law, you mess around and be perfect out there. You mess around and be you mess around and be great in the kingdom. You got a leg up. You are you familiar with it? You know what's about to go down. Exactly. Let's talk about some law. It's Deuteronomy chapter three. Let's talk about a little bit of law, then we'll get up out of here. It's Deuteronomy chapter three. Give me verse uh, eleven. Maybe verse thirteen. Where we leave off last week? Verse thirteen? Verse uh, eleven? Chapter 2, verse 20. What? That can't be right. The last one. We, we went into first chapter 3, didn't we? No, we didn't get to 3. Probably ended in 2. But. All right, then give me, uh, give me Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 20. I thought we was in 3. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 20. <coughs> all right, we just need some stabilization. I want people all over the darn place. I don't know what the darn believe. I don't know what the darn trust. You know what I'm saying? People got our minds all over the place, just scatterbrain. That's why just old anybody can come up and just say something to us and then just throw us all the way off. And not just us as, as Hebrews, you know what I'm saying? But all these people. These white folks too, these Mexicans too. Just let anybody just come up and say anything to them and it just change your whole trajectory. Change everything you believe in. Right? That's how the, the, you know what I'm saying? That's how, how these people, you know what I'm saying? They, they come into a little bit of money and Get into these secret societies and they get their brain warped by this uh, Scientology stuff. Cause we ain't found nobody's founded, nobody's nobody's stabilized in anything. So anybody come with something that sound good for the moment, that thing change change the whole way you look at stuff, right? You look at these the things that you we for years talked about how 
Jay Z, Kanye West, and, and 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 Rihanna, and all the black entertainment that that that's doing well, they was in the Illuminati for years. Beyonce, Illuminati, she wasn't really pregnant. She, you know, what I'm saying that was a blood sacrifice, and all this stuff. You look online, these people, these crazy people looking into, and people believe this stuff. They believe it. It's just because ain't nobody told them nothing. It makes sense to them though. That a rapper that's worth, no, no, $500 million, got to be Illuminati. Meanwhile, you got people like Jeff Bezos worth billions and billions of dollars. Don't nobody say nothing about that. But, you know. he just, guess what Jeff Bezos is? He's the owner of Amazon. Guess, he's just a genius. Right? He's just a genius. That's all it is. He's just flat earned. Pulled himself up by the bootstraps. Right? Black man in entertainment, he get it? Illuminati. Somebody had to give it to him. He had to sell his soul to get that. Yeah, a secret society could mess with those black folks anyway. Uh, uh, 500 million, you know that's a 500 million dollars, you know that's a drop in the bucket for these folks? <laughs> I mean, let's just say there was, let's just say there was a secret society. 500 million compared to 13 14, 15 billion dollars. Right. Get out of my face with that 500 million. What you gonna do, boy? You mop my floor for 500 million. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I ain't thinking about no darn Jay Z at that point. Right? But anybody can tell. They look at Kanye. They say the same thing about Kanye. Kanye, Illuminati, and this, that, and the other. Now he come back. And then. Now he ain't Illuminati. You know what I'm saying? Now, I mean, then he wasn't Illuminati. Then Kanye, he said George Bush didn't like black people. He ain't Illuminati no more after saying that. Right? He our man. Right? He good. He fight for black people. He on our side. He take Taylor Swift thing and say Beyonce guy, that's our guy. That's our guy. Right? He stepped in the Grammy. The same thing we was thinking. Right? Same thing. Tell us. We wasn't thinking that. When Kanye West, right? Before, when, when Taylor Swift got... Oh, won that award over Beyonce. All of us were sitting in our living room thinking like, Taylor Swift? That was she had knew too. Taylor Swift? Man, everybody know Beyonce killed that thing. Y'all tripping. And guess who had the gall to get up there and just say it? He got up there before she got up there and said, sorry, Taylor Swift, but everybody know Beyonce deserved this right in front of her. Oh, them white folks hated him. For a long time. Messed up his career. From that point on, they didn't invite him to a war show. Them white folk blocked him, hated him because of it. Right? But guess what the man said? Exactly what we were thinking. Right? When it come to when it come to George Bush. Tell us we wasn't all just sitting here thinking, George Bush don't care about no darn black folk. That thing went down, they didn't know who they had dealing with with Kanye. They let him get on the telethon. Everybody else on there and white folks on there, just please help the poor little black kids that are drowning right now. Just dial this number and donate. I mean, just a dollar if you have to. That thing got the Kanye. He is supposed to read his script. You can watch that thing. You can tell he is struggling with that thing. He is like, George Bush don't care about black people. You know what I'm saying? That thing just came out. And we are looking at it like, that's what I was thinking. That's our man. Now come along. Guess what he said? He said, you know what? I want to meet and I want to talk to Trump. I respect Trump. Oh, you done messed up now. <laughs> you messed up. They ain't our man now. <laughs> now look. Now now everybody talking. Everybody talking. I always knew Kanye was crazy. He was our man a couple years ago. His album, Wife of Pablo, just came out. Went platinum. Everybody talking about that whack album. All right? That thing is terrible, right? Everybody talk about that thing. He was the man, though. Just a, I mean, just a week ago, the man was the man. He come out, he go crazy, you know, check out from the mental hospital, take a meeting with Trump after Trump become inaugurated. Oh. Then they start getting skeptical about him. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how much I, his album's already out. I don't know how much I like that album now. Okay. Then he come back, he put on the hat, make America great again, take a picture in it. Oh, they really didn't like that. Then he came back again and said, I still want to meet with Trump. Right? 
then all of a sudden you start seeing all these clips where they cut pieces, cut pieces of the most ridiculous things he could possibly say. The media against him now. What you gonna do? Right? It's one thing when you for black people, right? You say something that all the black people agree with, but against white folks. We can hold somebody up. Right? They can all hate Kanye, but we can support him. We move the culture. Right? We move the whole thing. Hebrew. These white people, they don't follow us anyway. We got the style. Right? We got the spirit. It's a spirit. Spirit of the world. But it's a spirit that the most high God allows us to have that the more best of these folks just don't have. Right? So we can hold them up. Yeah, it's white versus black. You know what I'm saying? We don't mess with George Bush. Y'all do work. Mess with George Bush. Okay. We don't mess with Taylor Swift. Y'all do mess with Taylor Swift. Okay, we hold Kanye up through all that. And the white folks, eventually, they'll come around and start liking him again, too. What you going to do when the white folks already got us on their side and said, y'all don't like Trump? You know what? We don't like Trump. And then he said he do like Trump. Who going to hold him up now? Now the man out there by himself. He ain't got no help except for a couple of white folks, and they ain't going to be able to hold him up. Right? Not in the entertainment industry. They don't mess with that stuff. You ain't talking about Trump. You ain't going to say nothing positive about Trump in entertainment. Not you have a TV show, a movie, anything that related to TV or pop culture, that thing going to happen. You better go get on the radio. <laughs> you got to get on some talk radio. That's the only way you're going to make it. Like in Trump, you got to be in the middle of the country and talk radio. Anybody else, that thing ain't flying. Right? But guess what, what Kanye has been consistent with? Saying what people really feel but won't say. You don't think people you don't think people feel like slavery uh, uh, the results of slavery after a while is a choice? Is that not the message? Is that not what okay, let's talk about Mal Malcolm X. Malcolm X message, the message was what? By any means necessary. If Malcolm X is telling us by any means necessary, that's a choice. Well he's communicating to us at that point, he's saying that if we only in this position because we haven't done enough. We can change where we at right now. We can make a choice and get out of where we at right now. Let's segregate ourselves. Let's build our own businesses. That's what Farrakhan talking about right now. Build our own businesses. Go plant. He, Farrakhan want us to pull in money, right? And it's a good idea. I like it. I just don't trust the man. You, you pull in money, right? Everybody give a certain amount of money, and then we buy land, wherever land is open, and then we start planting on that land. That's his plan. And guess what he said? That'll get us out of our plight. So if you look at it, are these people not saying it's a choice? Tell me you ain't heard one of these celebrities before Kanye. Tell me you ain't heard one of these celebrities pop up and say, say, you know what? I don't want to talk about racism no more. That's in the past. We got friends that say that. We always just talking about racism. That's in the past. I know racism still happens, but... We just got to stop dwelling on We just got to, now we, now we got to live in the now. We got friends that say that. Celebrities say it all the time. So the Kanye say it, it's crazy now. Y'all been saying this stuff for years. We got to get to a point where we're able to look at things object, objectively and not get, not get taken in by all the, all the manipulation. It's manipulation on every side. Manipulation on every side of the coin. Everybody trying to manipulate you. Everybody trying to control how you think. Because it's money in it. It's power in it. More than money, it's power in it. If I can predict how you think, if I can, if I can tell you, if I know that I can manipulate you and say, put this in front of you, then put this in front of you, and it'll make you go that way, I got you. That's why, that's why I teach my boy, don't react off of emotion. If you sit here, if somebody, if somebody know for a fact that they can come up to you and tell you, you know what, you an ugly black boy. And you're going to get mad at that. They just know. No matter what, they can devise a plan and say, okay, if I tell him this, he's going to react this way and this can work out. If they're smart enough, they can make it work out in their favor. That's all emotions will do for you. It'll make you react. We don't have time for that because that's control at that point. If I can make you react, that's control. I appreciate my boy, my boy, my boy, bad. It's tough, just like their daddy. They won't give you the reaction you want. My youngest one, you go up to a 
when you try to get him, you tell him, he'll say hi. He just say hi one time. One time Daniel was in here. He, uh, he said, all right, bye. And that was like, what was that? That was like three months ago. The boy just said bye. I know. I was like, did you say just bye? I was like, say it again. He just stared and looked at me. I know he know how to talk. I tell him to say bye all the time. He's like, say bye to your grandma. I pick him up. Say bye to your grandma. He look at me like, hmm. As soon as I start walking away and he get hit that corner, he start going just like this where nobody can see him. I said, oh, okay. Right? You look at him because they not, they, what he doing, they just got too much of me in. I'm not going to give you the reaction that you're looking for. It made me feel out of control. I don't like it. Right? And that's how people, that's how people control us. They, they grab onto us emotionally. So that's why you'll see a video where you say, 400 years, slavery, choice. That's all we see. We look at that and we're appalled. Then you got people responding to it. You know what they say? Oh, you trying to tell me it's a choice that we got picked up from Africa and put on the slave strip? Is that what he said? That's not what he said. He got some question. He said, 400 years? Sound like a choice. He's saying, sure, something may have happened at first. Now you've been in this situation for this long and haven't did nothing about it? He said, sounds like eventually that thing becomes a choice. Do I agree with that? No, that's ridiculous, Kanye. But y'all agree with it. These other folks agree with it. Y'all say it all the time. That's my problem. Right? So now we've let somebody who's actually speaking what y'all believe, we let everybody turn it around. So what happens when somebody actually is saying something right and we believe it? We believe it, and they're saying, Kanye ain't saying nothing right. He don't, he don't know what he's talking about. The man is confused and crazy, and he's still trying to figure it out. Right? You can even see him on some of these things. They debating with him and trying to correct him, and he's taking the correction. He's looking at it like, because he really, he really don't know. He's sparking the conversation, trying to learn from it. Right? Because he, he don't know what he's talking about. But what happens when you get a man of God who know what he's talking about? And the people, the people believe it. Right? But they're too scared to say something because the masses don't seem like they believe it. What happened when you take that man of God and then you turn all the media against him? And that man of God is in a room just like this. And he say something like, oh yeah, these Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? They come over here. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? This ain't their country. Trump right about building the wall. All the good preaching we talk about, they take that clip, put that thing on the news. And recycle it, recycle it. What the Mexicans gonna do? They gonna look at me like, man, that dude racist. What the black folk gonna do? Black gonna be like, yeah, you right. You know what I'm saying? They ain't, they ain't the democratic principles. We gotta stand in solid. We gotta stand in solidarity with our Mexican brothers. You feeding in with the white man? You an agent? You don't think that's how these people control your thinking? I don't care about Kanye. I, don't, I can give a darn about Trump. I don't care about none of it. What I care about is our ability to form thoughts for ourselves, to be able to find the truth through all of the lies that's woven throughout the world. That's the only thing I care about. I want us to be able to see and be able to call their crap. When they're trying, they trying to say, this is how it's going and this is what you should believe, I want us to be able to be like, you know what? That's a lie. You full of it. We don't believe it. And guess what can teach us that? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. It's Deuteronomy chapter 4. Give me verse 1. I ain't letting these people sit here and lie to me. Let these people turn, turn me against a brother just because the brother, he just as confused as the rest of us. And he got, he got some, they got some of our, our most prominent people in media Turned against the man now. It is everybody palling on. Everybody palling on. Just all oh, Kanye done and Kanye this and Kanye. I'm like, for what? For what? Because the man said he wanted to talk to Trump. You idiot, you should be wanting to talk to Trump. How you gonna how you gonna have somebody here that you got a round table of people making decisions that affect you and you don't want no representation at the table? These white folks sit here and die for representation. And they and most of their fight was over us. Whole time we slaves while they sit here and fight. We celebrate their holidays. Where they die for representation. And you think they agree with the queen? Or with the king? Whoever running the 
the show at that time, these hypocrites? No, they didn't agree with him, but they wanted somebody at the table. I don't care if I agree with Trump or not. Sit me, let me hear what y'all talking about. Because even if I don't get my way, at least I can go back and tell my people what's about to happen. They sitting there at the table, we ain't got nothing to do with it. We just sitting on the outside saying, ah, he's ra he racist, he's racist. Uh, let me tell you something. Let's say, let's say they did ask to come to the table. I don't think it's enough outcry from our people to say they need to be there. Let's say that. Let's say some people ask. Let's say somebody secretly said, "Trump, can I come to this table?" Right? Trump, Trump, can I come to? I ain't heard him. Trump, can I come to this table? No, you can't. Let's say Trump said no. It ain't no outrage about it. Who mad that, that he told them they can't come? That should be us. All of us should be just as mad as we are that, that he president or he colluded with Russia or whatever we think happened. Just as mad as any of that, we should be mad and be like, oh, we can't get nobody at the table, Trump? That's something to be mad at Trump about. That's something legitimate. You can go to him and be like, okay, look, Trump, I need, you got 17 people at that table. I need one Hebrew. Give me one Hebrew. He can be light-skinned. Just give me one. That's a compromise. You give me a life. That's a compromise. He did. He was being Carson. No, yeah, no, no. We, we need somebody. We need somebody we approve of. Somebody with sick. You know what I'm saying? We need somebody to approve of. Somebody va validated. We got. You know what I'm saying? We need somebody. One. Just give us one that we approve of. Get him up there. They say. They say he, he gonna start talks now. He gonna make a mess out of them too. I know he is. Just because. Of, just how. Just how people are. He gonna set their butts up. It's Trump. Trump's smarter than a lot of people think. They gonna set up Trump talks now. This is what he said. This is, what, this is what he said he's going to do. He's going to invite, they say, oh, we'll see if it actually happened. Colin Kaepernick, Kanye West, and other black entertainers and sports athletes in a conference to talk about race. He's going to light they darn butts up. Because you know what's going to happen? He's going to put them in a position, because our stupid selves, he's going to put, put, put them in a position, if you come, your people going to hate you. Cause now you you sitting at the table with Trump now. You trying to talk it through with Trump. Your people ain't gonna rock with you. They ain't gonna tell you not to come. He already right? Said, he already and then once you that get that there, canceled, so. I got the entertainers. These people don't know nothing about what we talking about. These people about money ain't been co-opted and all that. They don't know nothing about what we talking about. So who really gonna I'm just taking the people that look good but don't have the information. It's a lot of them that got the information. And, and I, don't the one, I don't think them the one. I don't think them the one is gonna be. To negotiate. I, I know it's a lot of them. It's a lot of people got information. They ain't gonna be the ones there. And guess who ain't gonna be mad about it? We gonna be mad that whoever go. They gonna be mad. They we mad at Steve Harvey went. Steve Harvey was our man. He met with Trump. Oh no, I can't believe Steve Harvey. I will never watch The Price Is Right. What is it? Family Feud again. I'm watching. I'm watching Family Feud tomorrow. I like watching Family Feud. Yeah, I'm talking about. I be listening to his radio show in the morning sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Steve Harvey. Don't get me wrong. Steve Harvey don't know what he's talking about either. Never. Yeah, right? Don't. But I ain't about to turn against the man just because they want me to turn against the man. That's crazy. Like these Democrats and like did a whole lot for us. What they do for us? No. Keep us right where we yeah, darn are. Like these Republicans did something for us. What Republicans they do for us? And Democrats, and it is polar, uh, polarization at its finest because it's really not about that. But if, if, if we keep saying stuff like that and not looking at it, what's actually happening, then we, we'll always be where we've always been. Yeah, that's why we and always be where we always been. That's what we do. And until black people actually unify, no, I ain't no, ain't no and when they unify. do, if they don't, because every time that's they a, that's too it, high of a, that's too high of a goal, right? If we look at it, just, let's just look at it. it. But every time they do, no, nah, they ain't. They ain't too far. Yes, they have. When? They have. They have done it. That's when? why you had so many movements. Now you have movement. You had unity though. Because they come in. Yeah, Malcolm X. 
you had Malcolm X, you had uh, Michael Carmichael, and you had you had uh, Martin, Luther Martin Luther King. King. That wasn't you unity. Had, no, All of them against one another. You had even with Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman. You have times when people get they 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 come together, even if it's a one yeah, you have a group. Thing, they come together, but they each organize. Time, each time they do that. It's only one they, thing that can unify. They, 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 they do something to them to scare them. There's only one thing that can unify. None of that well, stuff works. There's only one thing that can unify. Because just like we started out, you got to have something solid. you got to have something solid. The word is solid. Right? The word is solid. The word the word holds something together. All the rest of this stuff, what you going to unify? What principle you going to unify on? Something that somebody told you? Somebody, something, something somebody said? And then what's going to happen? Somebody going to shoot it down and then disunity. You got something with the word, nobody gonna say nothing about that. Right? Not and be truthful about it. I can prove everything up in here. Because it's right, it's the truth. You can't break that. If you if we gonna have unity, that was unity. Other than that, best we're gonna get is organization. But that's too high of a bar to even say that we gotta unify. It's too high of a bar. No other, no other group of people unify. None. Right? It's a myth to sit here and be like all white people are on the same page and be doing it last night. They ain't on the same they page. Not be on they the just same got their advantage. Page. But not, and that's and this is not to yeah. go back and forth, but I'm just saying I'm just saying you you have you have white folks, they not on the same page, but they had an advantage. That's all. Most of our God gave them the advantage. This thing ain't right. It ain't like a whole lot of rocket science, like we gotta figure some stuff out. It ain't real clear. Obey the word, let these people run their course, and then uh we on top again. That thing gonna play out how it's supposed to, and the while it's playing out, we just got a couple jobs. Look out for our people. Look out for the people that look out for our people, right? And speak the truth to power. Tell these people that they wrong. That's it. That's all our people ever did. Whether we in captivity or not, we told the people that they was wrong. Right? That's it. We look out for the old press. We speak up for the old press. That's what we're doing now. It's in the heart of our people. That's why we always want to run and, and help the white women and help the Mexicans and help that. Because it's in our heart. Our, deep down, it's in our heart to help the old press. These people that got us in a way that we don't care about our own brothers. Right? You know what they always want to bring up? Well, black people are killing each other in Chicago right now. You know, they always want to bring that stuff up. Right? And the reason why they're able to bring that up, because we don't care. But the truth is, we don't care about ourselves. But we've been conditioned not to care about ourselves to a certain degree. But one thing they do, one thing you always tell them when they bring that thing up, black people that are killing each other in Chicago, they black butts going to jail too. You kill, you getting them on both sides. You got a black man dead and you putting the other one in jail. These white folks that are killing black people, they ain't going to jail. These cops that are killing them, they ain't going to jail. That's the difference. Right. That's what we arguing about. We ain't arguing about somebody killing. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. We arguing about people ain't being punished for it. They're going to have to bag off. It's the truth. Book tell you how they going to gang say the truth. We don't, we don't have to be put me at the darn table. Trump butt kick me out so darn quick. You know, they get my butt right on the body. You know what I'm saying? I don't care nothing about these people. I tell all these people the truth. Tell them all the truth. That's all these people. That's what people want to hear. The truth. It's just not enough people are saying it. So they scared. We've been there before. We had Martin Luther King. And he got shot and then it crumbled. We had Martin, Martin Malcolm X. And, it, and, 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 and it, 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 he got shot. I mean, yeah, he got shot and it scattered. We had Carmichael and his stuff got dissolved. We had the Black Panthers. They stuff got dissolved. They got infiltrated and got towed up. Shot a boat, bunch of them, put a bunch of them on drugs. And it's admitted. It's in the open and they know it. You know how hardy these people is right now? These folks know what we did to their people and we still can sit here and walk around. You know how they looking at us like y'all crazy. They get on, get on TV and play the same trick. They don't even got to go to that level no more. Why? They smarten them now. We'll stop it before it ever happened. We'll never let a black man get that get that prominent. Be able to lead that many people. It'll never happen. He'll be a child molester. He'll be a he'll be a rapist. He'll be all these things before he ever gets to that level. I guarantee. They gonna plant stuff 
his laptop and his iPhone had this, that, and the other on it. I guarantee they will never let a black man get to that level again. See how they did Bill Cosby. Got his butt out of there. Bill Cosby said, I'm about to buy some NBC. Give me some of that NBC money. All of a sudden. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe he, I believe he did a lot of this stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he did. Man practically admitted that he did. But I don't believe he's the only one doing it. And I don't believe it just came out when it came out. I believe it's okay. All right, uh, he's trying to buy NBC. Open up his files, please. What we got on him? All right, go ahead and release it. Go ahead and get that thing out of there. Let's go ahead and get him out of the way. Same thing, Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jackson, he said, I got 50% of Sony Publishing. That's crazy. Sell an album. I'm getting paid off of it. The Beatles? Go ahead and sell it. I'm getting paid off of it. I said, I got 50% of it. He was bragging about that thing on stage. He was going on tours, bragging about that thing. You got videos on a bunch of videos. He just stopped his whole show. Just start telling, talking to people. Sony's a little upset with me right now. I have 50% of Sony's publishing. And he started giving them the game, telling them how I work, how crooked these people is. All of a sudden, he pop up dead. Yeah. Now it starts to make sense. Why was all these kitty, you know what I'm saying, this Neverland Ranch stuff coming up? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he ain't do nothing funny bunny in there. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it didn't just come out when they came out. They said, go ahead and open the files. He trying to do some stuff. Open the files. Let's try to get them. He fought that thing way too long. He started winning them cases. They said, okay, uh, we got to go to stage two, guys. We got to kill him. He take drugs? Stage two. Put that in the drugs. That's, kind of, that's what I think happened with Johnny Cochran. That, that, brain, that all of a sudden brain tumor because he, you know, he couldn't more than they can handle. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it, right? I wouldn't doubt it. All these people, all these people, you put, them, you put them up there, you get too high on that pedestal, they got the game plan now. They know it's going to happen. They know it's going to happen. If they, they, can't, they can't Fred Hebden nobody no more. You can't do that no more. You just not. It's going to have a negative, it's going to have an adverse effect. You can't, you can't run up in a man's apartment, shoot him in the head. FBI, FBI, shoot him in the head, and he'd be a black leader. <laughs> right? You got to make that thing look like an accident, and you got to do it early. They not going to, they, they on it early. They said Amazon, Amazon got, y'all talk, y'all talk about this already? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Amazon got the, Amazon. Amazon got the, uh, got the, got this program where they, uh, they can decode speech. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And turn it into text. So like, you know what I'm saying, like me speaking right now, they working on this thing where it'll turn everything I'm saying. Just like how you're speaking to your phone, you say, hey, you know, call mother. And that thing, write it down, call mother. And then call, they got a thing where you can just put that thing on any any audio, any long audio, and it'll break down everything they're saying. Even Google right now, even for our videos, you can, you can put a thing called closed captions on there. And somehow it figure out all my words and put all my words at the bottom. So now, how hard is it? To say, okay, I got keywords that I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody to say Hebrew, Israelite. I'm looking for somebody to say black. I'm looking for somebody to say this. I'm looking for somebody to say that. And be like, okay, who's saying on, online? Just give me all the people that stand online. Okay, keep an eye on him. Once he get past 1,000 views, we got to pay more, more attention. You don't think that's happening? You don't think these people are smart enough to do that? Don't get me wrong. I don't think these people are all that smart. That, that's everyday business, though. To be able to keep an eye on certain metrics, that's everyday business. That's not even smart. Uh, smart. That, no, but that, it's not a matter of them being smart. It's a, 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 a matter of them being um, engineering something. They look ahead and engineer it because it's coming. It's yeah, like yeah, smart ain't the word. Wise. I don't think they're that wise. But they're, yeah, they're, but they're, engineers. But they're good enough to do that. What we talking about? They proven that they can do that. We got thousand documents that show they can do that. How do you think ISIS got here? These people planned this whole thing out, and it went almost as planned. It's just breaking up, but yeah, that thing went almost as planned. I'm pretty sure they got most of what they wanted out of it. These people came out with a paper before ISIS got here saying, you know what, we think that there should be an Islamic state to destabilize Syria and the region. A couple years later, all of a sudden, Islamic State, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a group, uh, Arab group, that translate their stuff to say Islamic State, ISIS. 
Islamic, what it stands for, Islamic State of Syria and the Levant. That's ISIL. And then Syria, uh, what is it? The United States created ISIS. Islamic State of Syria, yeah, Islamic State of Syria, or something like that. And that's ISIS. They created them, the CIA. They created ISIS. I mean, you got paperwork that say it. Paperwork saying this is exactly what we want to happen. A couple years later, it happened just like that. And ain't nobody looking at it like, okay, so y'all do realize y'all just created that then. So we know they we know they smart enough to do that type of stuff. Are we smart enough to look past a they crap? They're smart enough to put it on film and let you watch it in a movie 10 years before they actually pull it off so that you already be mind conditioned. No, see, that, that's the part. That's what I'm like, I don't no, know. That's the part I don't know about. But I, I don't want to. I don't want to go back and forth about how smart these people is. Maybe, maybe not. I'm skeptical about that. I don't think they that darn wise. I don't think they ten years down the line wise. I'm they good for a year or two. They ain't ten years down the line wise. Not in my mind at least. But but let me show you how we combat these people. This is Deuteronomy chapter four verse one. Now therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. For to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers gives you. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God has destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land where you go to possess it. Uh huh. Keep therefore and He do said, them. do what? Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding. He said, this is your what? Wisdom and understanding. He said, if you want wisdom and understanding, keep the law. Our people, we got a smart people. We don't have wisdom and we don't have understanding. The masses, masses of us. That's why these people was able to confuse us. So we had information. All the information is there and we sharp. But we still trying to muddle through it. That's why we jump off into so many of these conspiracy theories and go down all these rabbit holes. Because people are confused. They're just throwing a bunch of information at us and we have that information. So they manipulate us, but the wisdom is what keeps us from being wisdom. See, wisdom, what that does is it ties you down to a principle. Once you down tied down to some type of principle, and that principle is connected to something that's not going to change, then that means that something can throw something at you, but it's only so far you can go. Because you know certain principles are right. That's why this country, when they started up, they tried to set up a constitution. Because it's like, well, no matter what happens, we're going to set down these guidelines so that we can't drift too far away from a certain place. So we say, this is our constitution. This, these are our principles. Now, the principles in that case don't work because they're not based on something that don't move. They're just based off, of, off of a document that was stronger than you know not having a document. We got the book, though. Right? If, we, if our principles are the law of the Most High God, it does not move. So now when these people throw stuff at us and they tell them, oh, you should believe this and you should believe that, the whole time we, we have to compare, okay, what you telling me, that sounds good, but that's a little too far off from our law. That's a little too far off from what I know to be right. And that keeps wisdom. Then we, we're able to see the world clearly. I used to believe a whole lot of this stuff. Me and T used to believe all types of stuff. We start reading this book. I mean, it just gives you a sober mind when you're looking at this book. You look at this stuff and be like, that's just ridiculous. Like, this stuff just ridiculous. I ain't going for this stuff. It'll help you when you be able to see the truth. Clearly, too. That thing ain't, ain't even confusing no more. You ain't even kill your time on stuff that ain't even fitting. You can't even figure it out. Be like, hey, you can't even figure that thing out. That's all right. I got the principle. I know where to start. I know where to end. Keep going. Watch this. He said, this is the wisdom and the understanding. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations, uh -huh. which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. He said, all we got to do is keep it there, look at us and they say, surely this is a wise and understanding people. Keep going. 
For what nation is there so great who has God so near unto them uh -huh. as, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? Uh -huh. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I said before you this day? Right now, you know what these people do when they see our law? I'm so happy I didn't live in those times. They gainsay our law. They look at our law and they say, it's a foolish law. They think it's hypocritical. They think it's foolish. All that. Right? You know why they think that? Because we don't keep it. If we kept it, the book is telling you right now, they look at us and be like, man, I can't think of a law more righteous. And y'all don't believe that? When we like rap music, the whole world start doing what? You like rap music? When we like mumble rap, the whole world start doing what? You like mumble rap. So now it got to the point where... We don't like mumble rap, by the way. Eminem... Eminem, white man, can't drop an album, right? We're not talking about mumble rap. Taylor Swift, she come up with her album. Guess who she got to team up with? Future or somebody. Pink come out with her album. Guess who she got to team up with? The Migos. Right? These white folks, they got the kids that be spending the money. Why they got to come to our culture and get art? Popping music for them to sell. Because the, the little white kids, the spending money, they trying to follow what we doing. That's how it worked. If our culture was, this law is the most righteous thing ever, you don't think these white folk could turn around and say, you know what? What nation is so wise and got God so nigh to it? All right, coming soon, I promise you. Nah, not, I promise you not because I promise you. I promise you because the book promised you. I can stand on that. Book told you that? I promise it. I stand on what God said. I guarantee it. Not because I guarantee it, but because he already guaranteed. That's nothing for it. ain't nothing off my back. When God said that thing going to happen, it ain't nothing for my back stand up there and try to, look, now that thing really going to happen. That's easy for me. I stand on that. I just ain't standing on none of this fooling that y'all be talking about. Right? None of these fooling these people be talking about. They be running their darn mouth. Can't stand on that. Right? Did Russia collude with Trump? That thing ain't none of my darn business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Quite frankly, that thing ain't got nothing to do with me. Colluded with him or not? Did Hillary Clinton collude with him? Mm? Don't have nothing to do with me. When y'all gonna pay us some money? That's what I wanna know. When you gonna pay us for all the work that we did? We on the clock. I want interest too. <laughs> 500 years worth. <laughs> I want interest. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that what they told us? 40 acres in the darn mule? I don't want no darn mule anyway. Don't give me a darn stinking mule. Give me a whole donkey or you give me a horse. Don't give me no mixture. I think against our law anyway. That's why the most I got ain't let that thing happen. Give me no darn mule. You better keep that thing. Mule can't even reproduce. They tried to set us up from the get go and didn't even give it to us. Right? Nope. Give me my darn 40 acres with entry. That thing 500 acres. Now give it up. Don't no. no worry, we're going to get all of it. I ain't that. They ain't these people. They gonna, most of our guys going to make them give it to us. <laughs> they going to give us all of it. Every ounce of it. Right? Yeah. Willingly or unwillingly. By any means necessary, the most high guy going to make that thing happen. Malcolm X ain't seen nothing. Malcolm X was confused too. Poor soul. Yeah. Confused. He let that man lie to him. Didn't he? Should have been giving I, money to you. I said, that's all. <laughs> that's what I promised. <laughs> that's all. I ain't got no more to give you nothing but a dollar. She said, well, okay. I'll talk to you later. I said, okay. That got that. <laughs> it gonna go, you know what he did that? It's going to cost them more to collect that dollar from you over the phone mm -hmm. than it is to just, you know what I'm saying, just move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. All that's these people what I work. Think, I wasn't thinking about them folks. Yeah. 
That's a good idea. Man, they call me, I'm going to tell them a dollar. I'm going to give you 50 cents. <laughs> Anything you know else, right? How much your transaction fee? All right, I'll give you 25 cents. Boy, y'all should be giving us money. It tickled me, though. All right? That's all you got to do it sometime. Let these people oh, know. Well, let me get this lady to get you the address and everything. And I, and I said, okay, you can get my address. And I said, you whistle. You know your name? Okay, Miss Wilson. I said, if you know that much, you should know my address. And no, we don't know the address. We just know we just got your name. Man, all these other companies sell, they sell your name to them. They name your phone there, sell that to them. And I told they make money. That's all they do is make merchandise. How much are you giving? I said a dollar. He said a dollar. That's all. That's all. That's all I got is a dollar. I'm worth a dollar. So she said, well, that's okay. Uh, thank you for talking to me. I told you, perfectly welcome. That's right. We'll suffer now. We'll get more than our dollar later, though. Any questions, though? Go ahead and pray out.